Uh, but I want to get back to, to metals a bit here. Uh, shortages, delays, are things perhaps back to normal? I mean, how is the supply with, with silver and also with gold? And what are you hearing from the mints? Well, the supply with gold has been much better than the supply with silver. When I look at the last two years, 95% of all of our sales, which are record, um, have silver in them or are exclusively silver. Uh, and as a result, gold has not been as difficult to come by. But we can look at the beginning of this year as an example, 2021. In January, the U.S. Mint started rationing and allocating gold, gold eagles and gold buffaloes. And normally that happens in November, December, not two weeks into the new year. Uh, you know, gold is, is not immune to, to this supply chain issue. The U.S. Mint is the model of inefficiency. I'm one of 27 U.S. Mint authorized resellers, but all year long there has been nothing but delays and shortages. And, you know, in April, when they started to transition from type one to type two on, on the Eagles, uh, they were shut down for more or less four months. Now, they didn't actually close the building and turn off the lights, but nothing came out for literally four months. Uh, and if you go back to March of 2020, when the Eagles literally exploded in premium, they really haven't come down in the better part of almost two years. And the question is, is this a new reality? Uh, is this a new, what, what, what we can expect moving forward in terms of premiums? Uh, and as I mentioned, we now have two full-time employees that are, that are doing up, nothing other than securing product and securing um uh, inventory, which used to be a phone call and bang, it's in your warehouse. Now it's 90 to 120 days in advance. You, you are purchasing, paying 100%, paying the premium, the highest premium we've ever paid in, in, in 30 years, not able to hedge that premium, and then running logistics for 90 to 120 days, hedging, uh, tracking, staying on top of uh, shipping, uh, and watching it all the way through the system. And then deciding when it's okay to actually sell that product, knowing that we don't have it yet, telling the client we expect it in two weeks, but then oftentimes running into supply chain disruptions. And uh, I'll give you an example. We had uh, about $8 million worth of product that landed in the United States uh, in, the Gulf, in the Gulf Coast area uh, in Texas. And uh, had a Brinks truck pick up $8 million with the product, and it was going to our vault in North Dakota. It had to stop, go through Salt Lake City, where the two drivers quit because of the vaccine mandates, and left the truck inside the secured facility at Brinks Salt Lake City, where it sat there for six days. And finally, new two new drivers came in and drove it up to our, our uh, vault in North Dakota. But trying to explain this to customers, why their product was six, seven, eight days delayed, when we told them it was in the States and it was on its way, is not an easy discussion, but it's the new reality that we face. It's almost as if securing precious metals, Patrick, is running a logistics company. It's never been this way before. But I will say what's different is this. If you are not a big player, if you're not a company that has relationships, established relationships with the large mints, the large importers, the large primary distributors, you're shut out because it goes like this you have to place a very, very large order because if you want to be at the top of the food chain before everything sells out 90 days in advance, you got to place a big order, call it seven figures. You pay us a big order, you have to be able to hedge it. If you can't hedge it, you're dead because if you try to buy something 90 days in advance without hedging it, you're dead. The market vol volatility will kill you. So you hedge it, you buy, buy, pay 90 days in advance, you buy, pay huge premiums what you can't hedge, and then you run logistics, literally have an employee that is tracking this, staying on top of the distributors, staying on top of the mint, staying on, on top of the trucking, everything that needs to be done to bring it finally to the warehouse where it then is opened, segregated, and sent out. It, it's, um, well, we're up to the challenge, but I guess what I'm saying is that this will put smaller companies out of business. You'll see small coin shops throughout North America go out of business because they can't get product. And in an environment like this, buybacks represent such a minute part of anything that we do, crystallizing the old adage that there's no bull market like a precious metals bull market. And even though the price is not behaving the way a bull market may indicate, 
We all believe it will, but I would argue that the fundamentals are far more um, uh, persuasive than the actual price, at least yet. And people are realizing that they're flocking to get protection and it's becoming more and more challenging to get product to be able to offer to them on a readily available basis. I've been saying for the last year and a half that this market will be defined by an inability to source product. I really do believe that. If it's this hard to get now as we see a, a greater expansion, as a realization, uh, uh, a revelation that, oh my gosh, I need this. And these people are already way late into the game. When that expansion, uh, you know, let me just say that Rick Rule, someone who is a friend of mine who, who, who is as smart as any businessman I ever met, talks about a one half of 1% allocation to the whole precious metals matrix in the United States. One half of 1%. In 1980, that number was 8%. When the Dow Jones and gold crossed at 800, the last time we saw one to one, the average over the last 40 years, if it's eight and a half or 8% in 1980 and a half a percent in 2021, the, the average, the mean of that 40 year scope is two and a half percent, which would represent a five fold increase in demand in this industry would blow everything up overnight. And so as we are getting closer and closer to that average, as we've talked about, an expansion into the mainstream, uh, hedge funds, money managers, people looking just to exit with their profit. And where do you go if you exit with your profit? Not real estate, that's at all time highs. Not the bond market like you used to, that's at all time highs with interest rates at all time lows. Where do you go? Well, precious metals represent the only semblance of of valuation that there is, um, and they just, it logically makes sense to where we're going. We can talk about what the Fed is doing, or uh, uh, I'd like to at least at some point, and with money creation and who they're appointing, and all of this stuff tells me that this isn't stopping anytime soon. In fact, it's probably only gonna get worse, and I think people are waking up to that, and as we gradually move towards a greater percentage of interest in this industry, it will be defined by I believe a, an acute inability to source product rapidly or with any any semblance of a fair value attached to to the price that you pay for it. Okay, so so two things uh, caught my attention there. Um, are we going to see premiums coming down anytime soon? I mean, just to have a little bit of relief, and how significant a role are buybacks going to play? Uh, I don't think we see premium relief. I truly do not think we see premium relief. And I, I say that because it's getting harder and harder and harder to get this stuff and you have to go further and further out. The U.S. Mint Silver Eagle. So, you know, look, um, in November of 2019, had you asked me to buy Silver Eagles, I would have said, sure, $3.29 over the price of silver. I'll buy them back at 260 over the price of silver. And four months later in March, had you sold them back to me, I would have paid you 11 bucks silver. Premiums really have never come down since then, a little bit. The lowest I've seen them for ask price on Silver Eagles are eight bucks over uh, for literally for the last almost 20 months. Um, and I think it'll only get worse as we see more and more people decide to buy precious metals. Um, buybacks, no. I mean, look at, 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 there's something here in the States that we call junk silver. That's dimes, quarters, and half dollars minted prior to 1965. It's as rare as hen's teeth right now. Used to be the least expensive thing that you could buy, and now it's the most expensive thing with the exception of Silver Eagles. And this crystallizes your second question, and that is, will we see buybacks? And I say, hell no. In fact, junk silver, which hasn't been made since 1964, is impossible to get. No one is selling. Anyone who wanted to sell it sold it a long time ago. No one is selling to go back into the swamp, back into fiat currency. Instead, they're hanging on to it with both hands. And I think as it becomes more and more evident that you need to have a, an exit from the matrix, um, Precious metals is it. No one wants to go back even at a profit. They don't sell them unless they have to. So buybacks represent next to nothing in everything that we do. It used to, um, in 2017, it was six out of 10 sales that we were doing where people selling back as, as there was, uh, there was a, a new optimism in cryptocurrency and, and equities that were going to the moon. It has completely flip-flopped and now it represents less than one out of every 
thousand orders we do is someone selling no one is selling and i don't think you'll see people eager to go back into dollars uh chasing really all-time high valuations in in the three pillars of of wealth in this country stocks bonds and real estate all at all-time highs measured against all-time low interest rates incredibly